<clears throat> hey, what's up, everyone? I'm having a lot of clients reach out to me asking how they can add cardio to their routine. With more free time, they want to add some more training, but not necessarily weight training. Um, so I'm going to give you guys three simple ways to start adding cardio to your routine. Now, let's set something straight here. Cardio doesn't mean running. A lot of clients think that when I say cardio, it means running. Cardio is just training your cardiovascular system, getting your heart rate up and sustaining it for a certain amount of time. So here are three good ways to do that. Number one is at the end of a workout, right? So at the end of a workout, first you want to you want to maintain. You, most people's goals should be to maintain or gain lean mass. Um, so you want to enter a training session with that in mind. Get that taken. Get those goals taken care of first, and then at the end of a session is a good place to add a cardio type of uh, element to your workout. <clears throat> one thing I've said in the past is that how you end one session is how you start the next session. So for some people that might mean adding stretching to the end of a workout, making sure that you don't let your muscles seize up in a tightened state, do a little bit of stretching at the end of workout or at the end of the day so that you come back to the next session not so stiff and tight, right? Um, but another good thing to do at the end of a workout is to add a 10 to 20 minutes of just steady state cardio getting the heart pumping blood to the areas that you just worked out, helping the body flesh out all the, uh, the breakdown, the chemical byproducts of breaking down muscle through the workouts. <clears throat> it's a very good uh, system. In fact, even Westside uses the principle. Uh, they do, um, instead of cardio, they'll do 100 reps of an exercise at the end of a workout. But the principle is the same. It's to flush the area with the blood, help promote recovery at the end of a session so that the next session they come back better. A second one developed in the 1930s, believe it or not, is fart leg training. As funny as the name sounds, all it really is is a uh, it's a uh, play between going slow and fast. So the most common form of fart leg training is when you go to a track, you walk the straights and then you run the uh, run the curves, right? So that's a very good w way you can adapt it to anything. You can use time intervals, you can use distant intervals. When you're jogging along your sidewalk, you can say, okay, I'm gonna sprint to the stop sign and then I'm going to walk a certain amount of uh, time or distance. <clears throat> now the thing you wanna do here and to make this more effective is you wanna assign parameters here. You wanna assign distances that you are you know how far you're going or times that you can record. That way you can do a form of progressive overload over time, you can run further, run longer, shorten your rest intervals, and that's how you can progress using this, this method. So that's a very easy one for anybody to use out there. Now, the one thing I do wanna hit on here is that if you are gonna do running, right? A lot of people ask me, is running bad? Running is not bad. Squats are not bad. Bad squats are bad. Bad running is bad. So a lot of people think that just because they can run for their life, right, that they can run. But that's not the thing. Running is a skill. Running efficiently over a long period of time is a skill. You have to be taught, you have to know how to do it, and you have to learn how to do it. And it takes some time. Don't think that one day you're just going to force gump it and just start running because you feel like running, right? You might end up paying a dear price for it, achy joints, sore back. And that's all gonna be because of the mechanics of your running. So unless you know how to run, unless you know you have experience running, your body is okay with it, I would not suggest running as your first form of cardio choice. I would suggest a non-impact form like rowing or a stationary bike. Um, again, run, cardio is not running, it's just training your cardiovascular system. There are lots of ways to do this. Running is not the only option. All right, and then the last one, um, this may not seem like cardio to most of you guys out there, but again, I'm going to keep beating this into the ground. 10 minute walks after you eat big meals is an incredible thing you can all be doing uh, for free, right? And, and enjoy its benefits. <clears throat> it may not be as much of a cardio training uh, as any of the other two right here, but <clears throat> if you haven't been doing any cardio into your system, right, this is a good way to just break the body in. 10 minute walks after you eat and over time being consistent with that with that anywhere between one to three weeks your body is going to be ready to go into that full-fledged cardio workout that you do either at the end of your workout or on its own so don't neglect don't dismiss the the benefits of those 10 minute walks after your meals it's very simple it's very easy 
<clears throat> and it's a very good starting place if you have been doing zero, zero kinds of cardio in your routine. So I hope that it helps all of you out there. Three easy ways to start adding cardio into your routine during this uh, shutdown.